Amen. As we continue our lessons on, on uh, stewardship, we're going to review uh, the last couple of Wednesdays. Tonight, however, week three, we're going to be talking about the principle of the first. Remember that, the principle of the first. What we did on week one, if you were here, who's the owner? When we talk about stewardship, we're talking about the owner. And who is that? It's obvious. God. God is the owner. God is all. And all belong, it all belongs to him. And we simply are the beneficiaries. We benefit as a result of him being the owner of everything. Scott said uh, in, during this lesson that when we understand and realize that when he is the owner, then we do not have to worry that that responsibility is taken off of us. And if we can just partake in that and understand that God and God alone is the owner, it makes it a lot easier. And we get to benefit as a result. Week two, we looked at faithful stewards are blessed. Who's the stewards? Who's the faithful stewards? It's us. We are the faithful stewards. Now, that's, that is a strong, strong statement. Are we faithful? Are we faithful with what God has given us to steward? Are we faithful emotionally, physically, and spiritually? Can God trust us to be loyal, constant, true, devoted, dedicated, committed, trustworthy, dependable, reliable, and most importantly, obedient? Can he? Those are the questions that we need to ask ourselves as we're going through these, uh, the lessons on stewardship. So think about that tonight as we, as we go through this. Now, again, we're looking at the principle of the first. Let's begin with the fundamental question. Is God really first in your and my life? Is he really first? Stop and think about it. Think about today, when you woke up, was he first? Was he first? Those are the things, and, and it's not, this is not, to, it's not judgment, it's not, a, it, it's really a time of honesty. This can lead to correction and a new, deeper way of experiencing God. We understand that God is first. But do we place him first? Do we? Ask yourselves. So the principle of first. Exodus 13, 1 through 2 reads out of the New King James Version. Again, we're talking about the first. The firstborn consecrated. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, consecrate, remember that word, to me, all the firstborn, whatever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and beast, it is mine. Consecrate to make or declare something sacred. So the firstborn, God says, consecrate that to me, for it is is sacred. The firstborn of the womb always represents God's claim on all, on everything. Everything. It's not that those who put him first never have problems, right? But when we put him first, we are positioned so that his principles rule in our lives and with that position comes protection and blessing as a result. 
Scripture gives us a very clear instructions as to what we are to do with the first fruits in our lives. Exodus 13, 12 and 13 reads, You must present all firstborn sons and firstborn male animals to the Lord, for they belong to him. A firstborn donkey may be bought back from, from the Lord by presenting a lamb or a young goat in its place. But if you do not buy it back, you must break its neck. However, you must buy back the, the, every firstborn son. Now, some firstborns were set apart for sacrifice and some were redeemed. How do you know whether to sacrifice it or to redeem it? God gave us two animals for, as the example that are examples of these classifications. The firstborn of the clean animals had to be sacrificed, and the firstborn of the unclean animals had to be redeemed by sacrificing the clean in their place. You get it? You see it? Jewish tradition, donkeys were considered what? Unclean. So you would, you would have to replace it for something clean as, it, as a lamb in its place. So does that mean that we were born clean or unclean? Romans 5.12 says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all have sinned. So who is Paul talking about here? Adam. Adam is the first. Adam sinned. And as a result, we became what? Unclean. We became unclean. The Bible clearly says, for everyone has sinned. That means that we are born again unclean. Think about it this way. Do you have to teach your children how to be bad? Absolutely not. No way. It comes naturally. We were all born, what? Unclean. We were all born into sin. And according to what we read in Exodus 13, 13, we must be redeemed. So we are unclean. So now something happens has to redeem us because we are unclean, because we are sinners. So who is it that redeems us? For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose it, their value, it was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. Adam was a sinner. Christ is clean. And he is our sacrificial lamb. It was a result of his his work on the cross, 1 Peter 1, 18-19. Now, Jesus, God's first son, again, is clean. His death redeemed us, redeemed our unclean lives. Do you realize what this represents? Jesus is God's, what, first portion, his tithe. The tithe is not legalistic. It's about being what? The first. It's about being the first. Jesus is the principle of the first. Colossians 1, 14 through 15. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Tithing is not, about, is not about putting God first. It's about our heart. And really, that's what it comes down to. 
What is the condition of our heart? Because that is what God looks at more than anything else. What is the condition of our heart? The first portion given by God redeemed the rest. The first portion of the re- of, uh, is the redemption portion. In fact, the first of everything must be redeemed. So why does God require the first? Because it takes faith. It takes faith. How does it make you feel to know that Jesus was sacrificed for your redemption? Think about it. How does it make you feel? I don't think we put too much thought in that sometimes. But think about it. Ask yourself, how does it make you feel to know that Jesus was sacrificed for your redemption? Eddie, this is where I can go off and preaching, right? But I can't. <laughs> we have to stick with the script. First fruits must be offered. The Bible gives us clear instruction on what we do with our first fruits. But are we really paying attention to what the scripture says? Proverbs 3, 9 through 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth. And with the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. Everything, the best part. And remember, I asked you a while ago when you got up this morning, did you give God your first? the best part of your day. Honoring the Lord has everything to do with the condition, again, of what? Our hearts, as we submit our first fruits to Him. What is our motive for giving the first fruits for tithing? Here we go. You knew we were going to get to this point, right? At one point. It's about our motive and perspective, how we look at it. If we are doing it to get something in return, are we really honoring him? Think about it. Are we really honoring him if that's the case? No. If we are doing out of obedience that is rooted in love, that is something very different. You see how it changes? You see it? Big, big contrast there. Exodus 23, 19, as you harvest harvest your crops, bring the very best of the first harvest to the house of the Lord your God. We are to bring the first of the first fruits. Notice the Bible uses the word bring instead of give. Why? Because we can't give what doesn't belong to us. We can only bring it to God's house, and when we do, we are returning to God what he already owns. As a principle, 10% is what we give in tithing, right? As a principle. And he lets us keep the rest. But who does it belong to? It belongs to God, nonetheless. But yet, he gives, us to, gives that to us. And we use it to further. That's his blessings furthering us in our lives in what we do how we work, how we produce. So he gives us the rest of it for us to take care of and to steward well. So just because you give the 10%, it doesn't stop there. It continues. The rest of it 
you must, we must be good stewards, and we must be very, very careful in how we use the rest of the blessing that he's given us. Believers tried to minimize tithing because it was declared under the law. And we're not under the law as believers in Jesus, right? We're no longer under that law. And it is true. Again, we're not under the law, but does that mean that we can steal, commit murder, lie without consequences, and commit adultery? That was under the law. But no, we cannot continue to do those. Stealing, adultery, and murder were wrong before the law was ever written. And they are still wrong even after we are no longer under the law. So the principle was before the law, before the law remained during the law and remains to this day. Sp uh, scripture makes it very clear. Abel's first of his flock offering was acceptable to God, and this was in 4000 B.C. Was that before the law? Yep. Abraham's tithe was offered to Melchizedek in the year 2000 B.C. Moses received the law in 1500 B.C. And David spoke of bringing the first fruits in 1000 B.C. And then Jesus affirmed it 1,000 years later. That's quite a timeline. The law didn't make, tithing, didn't make tithing right. It was right before even the law existed. You see it? You got it? The tithe must be first, as we've already said. And tithing is about putting God first then the tithe is and should always be the very first thing we give. Every Friday morning, the first thing that Lynette asked me, what is the tithe? Because she understands that principle. She understands that that is first and foremost before we pay anything else. God's tithe must be first. The first belongs to him. All of it, not just part, as we talked about here just a while ago. So just like God told the Israelites, it is that first portion that redeems the rest, that takes care of the rest. For this reason, the first portion carries a blessing. Again, pay the tithe, and the rest of it comes. The rest of the blessings come as a result. The tithe is the first thing you pay before the bills, before you go shopping, before anything else. It is the first money you spend. And you really don't want to give the first portion to the electric company. They don't have the ability to redeem the rest, right? They don't. So I know it can be scary at first, and, I have, and Lynette and I have been there. We've struggled at one point with the idea of tithing, giving that first fruit to God. It absolutely does take faith to put this into practice. Did you hear that word practice? Start practicing giving the tithe. And all of a sudden it just starts to work. Especially if you have believed the lie that you just don't have enough to tithe. How many times have we, how many times have we said that, and how many times do we hear that? We just don't have enough to tithe. You can't afford not to tithe. You cannot afford not to tithe. But when you take the first step from a heart of faith and believe that God will come through for you, amazing things begin to happen. You know, it, it, it is amazing at times because we do tithe. 
where God, in a supernatural way, blesses, brings that, that extra blessing in your life. We're blessed anyway, but all of a sudden this comes or that comes or we're blessed with that, or we're blessed with this, and I'm going, wow, that is amazing. Does it happen every day? No, because God is already blessing us. But boy, it is sweet when it happens like that, and I know that many of you have experienced that. So wrapping it all up, we honor God by putting him first in every area of our finances. The first portion of our increase is dedicated to God, and he redeems and redeems the rest. Healthy stewardship, bring the first portion to God out of gratitude and honor for who he is and the life he has redeemed us from. Healthy stewardship honors God's principle of the first. Question. It's time to do some evaluation. When we stand before God, and we will, we will all stand before God. The question will be, did you put me first in everything? What will, our, what will our answer be? What will our answer be? And it's not only about tithing. It's not only about finances. Did you steward well your salvation? Did you steward well my gospel? Did you steward well your family? Did you steward well your church and your community? community? He's going to ask us. We're going to be accountable. And that alone, to me, for me, is powerful because I want to be able to stand before him at the end of the day and he'll look at me and say, well done, good and faithful servant. Because you steward everything that I gave you. Again, is it easy? No. But is it achievable? Yes. And will God one day ask how we did it? Yes. Yes. So keep that in mind as we move forward. Bow your heads with me tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's do some self-examination. Have we Put him first. Do we put him first? Will we put him first? That's what we need to ask ourselves tonight. Because if we haven't, and if I haven't, I need to repent. I need to repent if that's the case. Father, tonight, examine our hearts. You gave your very best to us. We were dead in sin. But you gave your son Christ as the first fruit so that we 
can be redeemed. And for that, we are grateful and thankful for the work on the cross. You even went further to give us the Holy Spirit, which dwells in us, that helps us to take a lesson that we went, that we had tonight, and uses it to convict us, to speak to us. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, because otherwise there's no way that we would even know or realize or understand. We repent. I repent, Father. If any, any aspect of my life where I didn't put you first today, I repent. Forgive me. Forgive us, O oh Lord God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your forgiveness. And help me to be, help us to be better stewards of what you have given us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, guys, we love you. We'll see you. Well, I won't see you Sunday. I'll be out of town uh, this weekend. But we love you. I want to hear next week that we are better stewards as a result. So we'll continue this series uh, next Wednesday. Scott will be back then. Love you. Have a good week. Enjoy the weather. Amen. Amen.